What's up guys, it's Nick White here, and I do all of the Hacker Inc. and Lead Code Problem Solutions. I have playlists for both of those on my channel and everything else in the description. This is Sword Array by Parity2. We've done this problem before. Let me make sure we're recording. Yeah. Um, we've done Array Sword by Parity1. Uh, this one's a little bit better. Given an array of non-negative integers, half the integers are A and A are odd, half are even. So they're non-negative integers, non-negative numbers. Half the numbers are odd, half are even. Sort the array. So when you're in an odd index, so meaning one or three or five or seven, etc., the v element at that index is also, the value of it is also odd. And the if you're at an even index, the element at that, uh, at that index with the value has to be even. Um, you may consider any array that satisfies the condition. So... How do we do this? Well, brute force, I guess, it's a pretty easy problem. Brute force, I guess, would be a solution where you just do a scan through, um, and you have uh, you use extra space. So you'd have a new array. You could have like a new array, and you could set it to like new int of a dot length, right? And then you can loop through. And when you're at an odd index, you put you only put odd elements into the new array uh, at odd indexes, and then you only put even elements at even indexes. That's okay, um, but they probably won't like that in an interview, like because that's just an easy. That would just be too easy of a problem. I feel like they'd be happy with that. They'd give you that, and then they'd be happy that you figured out that solution. But they'd want you to improve. So, what is the improvement? Well, we don't need constant space. You can do this sort in place. So how do we do the sort in place? Well, basically, we want even indexes to have even numbers. Odd indexes, odd numbers. So how do we do this? We have a pointer. We have two pointers. It's not technically a two-pointer approach. It's kind of. There's a lot of two-pointer approaches that involve swaps. This is one of them. You're going to have a pointer at all even indexes. So we're going to have an we're going to have one pointer that points to even indexes, and it's going to loop, and it's going to jump from 0 to 2 to 4 to 6 to 8, etc., and we're going to have one that jumps from 1 to 3 to 5 to 7 on odd indexes. And we're going to have a loop. And we're going to loop using those pointers, check the values, and make sure that it's right. Make sure that the elements of the even ones are even and the ones that are at odd are odd. And we're going to keep doing that. And if we find one that's out of place that in the even indexes, obviously there has to be one out of place in the odd because there's an even number of evens and odds. So, or if we find one that's out of place in the odds, we're going to have to find one that's out of place at the even. So, um, we loop through until we find two elements out of place, and then we swap them. And I mean, that's pretty much the gist of it. It's an in-place swap, and that saves all the space. It's really not even that bad of a problem. We're just going to have i. So, in our solution, we'll have i be the um, pointer to the even indexes. We'll have j be a pointer to the odd indexes. So, we'll start at 1. And, um... Then we'll also get the size of the array. And here's our loop. We'll just do while i is less than a dot length and j is less than a dot length. Um, we will do while i is less than a. no, we don't need a dot length. Sorry, that's why we grabbed. That's why I grabbed the size because I wrote this a second ago and it looked kind of messy with a bunch of a dot lengths. We loop through while i is less than n and um, a of i. So the element at an even index is, um, is even. You know, we check the remainder of uh, seeing if it's divisible by two and the remainder is zero, then we know it's even. We just jump by two because we're only going by even spaces. And this is going to be the same thing for the odd indexes, except, you know, obviously, you know, j less than n and array of j. And we want to make sure these are odd. So an odd element divisible by two would have a remainder of one. Um, so we just do this in J increments by two. We just do this and we jump along. And if these loops break, that means that we found an element that is out of place in either the odd or in. Because, right, we're just keep, we're looping through. We're just looping through by two. Everything's even. Everything's all good. If we break out of this, we're either done with looping through and everything was perfect. Or we found an element that's out of place. Same for this. So we found two elements that's out of place now, for example, let's say. So down here, we can do a check, you know, if I is less than N and J is less than N. So this is to check that because these loops could break out if we get to the end of the list and everything's perfect. This is to check that we didn't reach the end and we actually found elements that are out of place. 
So we just do this, we do this check down here, and then we can do our swap, right? Int temp is equal to a of i, a of j is equal to a of i, and a of, no, sorry, a of i is equal to a of j. I always mess up on those. And a of j is equal to temp. Um, then we do our swap, and then we just keep looping, and then eventually we get to the end, and then that was the in-place sort, and that's why it's way better um, than using a whole new array and doing, you know, loops through the current array and, you know, doing using a whole new array. I mean, if we look at the solution, this guy wrote it a little bit differently. Here, here's the original solution. You just have a new array. You loop through at the even indexes. You put even numbers at the odds. You put odds, O of n. O of n space. You don't want that. This is the in place. He did a little differently. He had a, um, he just had a for loop doing the even numbers with i, odd with j, still similar there. And then he did if he sees an even number out of place. So if he finds an odd in an even index, then he loops until he finds the j. Uh, he loops until he finds an even in an odd place, and then he does the swap. Similar concept um he just only kind of concerns himself with putting the evens in place and then by default uh when the evens are all in place the odds are all in the place sorry for saying even and odd so much it's just like that's the problem so um either way you could do this you could do this i think this one's a little bit cleaner um someone even i even saw someone's solution where he modularized the swap a lot of people do that they just make a whole method for the swap and then they just call swap um, so let me know what you guys think. What's your preferred method for doing this? Um, yeah, but cool problem, easy problem, cool solution. Thanks for watching. Check out the other videos, and I'll see you guys next time.